Hi there, Stone Coast. Let's go ahead and pray before we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning together as a community. We thank you for being part of this message. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We're so grateful for, um, for how he came to earth to show us how to love one another and to live. Lord, we just ask you to um, let this message just permeate our spirit this morning illuminate what it is you want us to each take from it. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi there, Stone Coast. I'm Cara Daniello. I'm part of the Stone Coast team. Welcome. If you're new to our broadcast this morning, we'd love to thank you for joining us with a small gift. We'd ask you to fill out the Connect card in your Facebook feed or on our website. And uh, we just want to get to know you and um, see how we can help uh, pray for you and serve you and help get you connected. We're able to do all of the amazing things that we do in our community and this church because of your generous giving. We'd like to invite you to participate in giving to support the many efforts of Stone Coast. You can do this uh, by clicking on the link in your feed or you can uh, go to our website, stonecoastcommunity.org. One of our major initiatives is working with uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness. And right now we're in the midst of our soul care project. Um, it is a campaign to put shoes, brand new shoes on individuals experiencing homelessness in Rhode Island. We invite you to be part of that. There are three different ways that you can do that. Uh, you can click on our Amazon charity list um, and that brings you right to a list of shoes that you can purchase and they'll be mailed directly to four echoes so we can disperse them uh, in the next few weeks you could also donate uh, financially and that link um, will also be in your feed and or you can drop off a pair of brand new men's or women's shoes at four echoes that's our vintage shop in seekonk massachusetts 
Um, lastly, we just invite you to share this message today. So go ahead and click the share button at the top of your feed. There may be someone in your newsfeed or in your friend group that uh, could really um, could really enjoy this message and um, you never know who you might impact. So we ask you to go ahead and do that. We're excited to dive into our third week of our Simply Christian campaign, excuse me, Simply Christian series. Um, and so I invite Sean to come on and I'll see you at the end of service. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Kara. Good to be with you. And um, welcome. Yeah, welcome to Stone Coast. I'm, I'm Sean Smith and I'm the pastor here. And uh, if this is your first time being with us, just say thanks for being with us. And to everyone that's been on for a while, just love having everyone here. It's just a, it's an amazing opportunity to gather together. I know it's a little different, right, because it's online, but it's really exciting to dive into Simply Christian. This is meant to be interactive, right? So whether it's your first time or a hundredth time, it doesn't matter. Like, Throw in questions, comments, thoughts. Um, I, we like to stimulate and challenge people's thinking here to, to get us to reflect and to, uh, to ask deep questions and wrestle with scriptures and wrestle with God and, um, and just to really be able to learn more together, right? So um, we are in a Lenten season. Some of you know that. I love to see, you know, uh, Lenten season for me is about what do we give up? Give up something that um, as a spiritual practice, right, this is an opportunity to, to grow spiritually. And so um, I'm curious to see what did you give up? Uh, how's it going? Like maybe you could throw in the, um, <laughs> like I put like ice cream and cookies or whatever, like I would be typing that in and then put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm going to have my phone with me throughout this uh, teaching and I like to be able to see what y'all are doing and then I can react to it, right? Um, but yeah, so let me know, uh, what, do, what are you giving up for Lent or what are you taking on? You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can look at it as like, I'm going to start doing something as well. And, and then I want to know how are you doing? And then maybe we can, um, you know, how can we support you better in that? Okay. So, um, the other thing I thought about during Lent, I've been talking to different folks, right? Just in, in my travels and just to, seeing different people and stuff like that. And inevitably it comes up, you know, this idea of, of Lent will come up and I'll be like, um, I'll be like, Hey, have you ever done anything for Lent? Have you ever given up anything? So just by sharing what I'm doing and then sharing it as a spiritual, a way to grow spiritually and to, to transform. Like a lot of people are into transformation, right? They want to change their lives. And so to take 40 days and do that is awesome. So if you haven't started yet, it's not, it's obviously never too late to do so. And so we're only getting into the halfway point here. And I would love for you to prayerfully consider what is that one thing you'd like to give up. And if, if you need help with that, like I, I encourage people to find someone else to do this with. Yeah, Ray, gave up Dunkin' Donuts coffee. That's a biggie, <laughs> right? Because everywhere you drive is like Dunkin', 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 right? So that's good. And then you're going to save a lot of money. So I'm glad it's going well, Ray. So you're going to save a lot of money. Now, here's an idea for you, right? I don't know how many times you went to Dunkin', <laughs> but let's say you went twice a day and that was like six bucks a day. Now, six times 40, right? Ooh, all of a sudden you got almost 250 bucks. Now, what can you do that to bless another human being, right? So I just like to get creative with it, have fun with it and, um, you know, see what God does in and through you. All right. So that's that. Uh, with Lent, love to see how that's going with everyone. Jessica says, sugary beverages going great. All right. Woo, woo. Way to go. Mine are um, like at nighttime, chocolate chip ice cream, chocolate chip cookies, brownies, all that good stuff. I love nine o'clock at night. Boom. That's the way to do. So I've given that up. And Justin says, giving up energy drinks. Awesome. <laughs> now you just, ah, right. Just kidding. Uh, energy drinks is one of those, you know, paradoxes, right? Um, so like jumbo shrimp. And so here we go. So we're going to jump in. This is called Simply Christian. It's by N.T. Wright. And N.T. Wright, some of you know him. Uh, he's just like, to me, he's, a, he's one of the greatest thinkers of our time. Like, truly, like, that's not an overstatement. Uh, a lot of people say that he's the, the C.S. Lewis of our day and age. So um, I can't say enough about him. Uh, I'd encourage you to get his book, Simply Christian, and then look at other books that he's written. Just very, very profound. And so... Um, the other thing is we'll be having discussion groups tonight. If you want to continue to jump in, some of you have already been doing it. It's been going great on Sundays or Wednesday nights from seven o'clock 
to eight o'clock. Um, we'd love to have you. It's a great opportunity. There should be a link in the feed there. If you want to get involved, it's not too late. Um, yeah, so this is an opportunity to be connected, to go deeper, to ask questions. I hope that you take notes when we're talking right here and now. So these are things that you can like, you know what, when Sean was talking about this, uh, I had a question about it. And then we can bring that up tonight or on Wednesday. So I highly encourage you to, to do that. And let's just have fun, interact, and let me know any questions that you have and we'll go for it. All right. So over the last couple of weeks, uh, the first week we talked about the four echoes of a voice, which was justice and beauty and spirituality and relationships. We just talked about how those, those are deeply in us because they're the echoes of God's voice that he created us in his image. And thus those things are in us, right? And they're echoing and they're all around us. And God, God wants those to be a part of our lives, for us to be aware of those things. And then how can we put these things back to rights again, right? So um, if your relationships are, are unhealthy, they're broken, whatever, how can we reconcile? How can we forgive? How can we love more deeply? And, and so on, right? Um, and then last week, we talked about God and Israel. And this idea that there's a lot of different views of God throughout church history. And we just chose three to look at. But it was like, hey, God created and then um, he's a part of everything, right? Everything is in God. God is in everything. That's a pantheistic view. Um, and then another one was uh, the, the, the view that God created, Epicureanism. He created, and then he's a very distant God, right? He wants nothing to do with his creation. He's separate from. And then we put forth like what we consider to be the simply Christian worldview would be that God created and that he's intimate and intricate within this. Like there's a interlocking and overlapping between heaven and earth. And that we can catch glimpses of him here and now. So those were three views we talked about. And today we're going to talk about the fourth act of the play. So we talked about a five-act play. And the fourth act is Jesus Christ. So this is this is the most pivotal teaching in Christianity, right? So what I mean by that is the five-act play is you have creation, then you have the fall, then you have the story of Israel, then you have Jesus, and then you have the church slash new creation. So this is critical to our understanding. And in Christ, everything changed. And so this is so important for us to really understand. Like when Jesus came on the scene, I'm going to talk about some of the things that Christianity isn't, but like he literally, it changed the world. And that's, I'm not trying to make a grandiose statement there. Like I'm, I'm being very factual. Like he changed the course of history. There's like historians that can actually track that and trace like how the world changed as a result of Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection. So this is something to, to really wrestle with. And if you're new to, to Christianity, meaning like you might not be a Christian, but you're just asking questions, you're wondering about it, you're curious about it. This is, this is important to hear. I was talking to a friend of mine this, this past week, maybe it's two weeks ago, and we were just thinking about saying that. I, I said to him something like this. I said, you know, if you think about it, Christianity has been around for 2,000 years. So that in itself, just hold on to that thought for a second. There's not many movements that you could point to that have been around for 2,000 years. Never mind to have the impact that it's had. And I, I, I'm going to say that you know, some of the research shows this, there's over a billion Christians in the world. So I can, I can say that there's been billions of people's lives changed and touched and transformed by Jesus Christ, by Christianity. Like I just hold, that's mind boggling. We kind of maybe take it for granted. But if you are looking for something like that's historically um, accurate, you're looking for something that you can kind of sink your teeth into. And because a lot of people are like very analytical, which I love about that and ask a lot of these questions about Christianity. It's like, well, just step back. This is a very intellectual thought. This is something that you can say, this makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't think billions of people have been wrong throughout the ages. I don't think that um, something that has lasted this long, that there's something about it, obviously, right? And then you can go layers and layers and layers down into that. But that's simply incredible. So this idea of Christianity, this idea of this person named Jesus Christ, when he came, when he was born here, and how he lived his life, this is what we're going to talk about. It changed the course of history. All right. So let's at, let's look at what it isn't. All right. So this idea, and this is thoughts from N.T. Wright. And he says, Christianity is not about Jesus offering a wonderful moral example. 
All right. So these are things that Christianity in its essence are not. It's not about a movement based off of morality. Now, this is not to say it's not important to, for holiness, for purity, uh, for morality. Like these things are important, but it's not the essence of Christianity. It's not why Jesus Christ came to earth. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, N.T. Wright says, is Christianity is not about Jesus offering or demonstrating or even accomplishing a new route by which people can go to heaven when they die. Um, I thought that this was uh, maybe a bit tougher for people to swallow. Uh, this idea that a lot of us um, have believed, right? The, the, you know, there's a lot of different doctrines in Christian circles and, and, and you know, depending on how you were raised, maybe the whole point of this was to just to get to heaven, right? And, and I know a lot of us maybe were raised on that. So, but that's not the point. That was not the major emphasis of Jesus when he was here. And some of you might be saying, Sean, but Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And I'm saying, yes, absolutely. He, he is all that. Uh, but that's not why he came. In fact, I would suggest that Jesus was more concerned about bringing heaven to earth and bringing his kingdom, right? His kingdom come and his will be done than he was about getting out of here to go to a place called heaven when we die. Uh, and this begs the question, if you take this line of thinking down a little bit, Jesus was more concerned with how we lived than what happens when we die. All right. So think about that. He's more concerned about how you live this life, like his kingdom here and now. Is it impacting your life? Is it impacting society? Is it impacting the world? That's what he's really, really concerned with. And I think that many Christians have gotten this backwards when we focus on uh, we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. You ever heard that statement before? <laughs> so we can be so focused about like, yes, this is all about getting to heaven, getting to heaven. That means like getting out of here and going to this place called heaven that it's like we lose sight of like, wait a second, God has us here now for a reason and it's to help usher in new creation. Okay. Another reason Christianity is not about giving the world fresh teaching about God himself. <laughs> I was like, ooh, like these are all little things from N.T. Wright. I'm like, all right, this is interesting, right? Um, so again, like I would suggest Jesus was a fantastic teacher. In fact, he was the goat. I believe that. He was the greatest of all time. He's the greatest teacher to ever walk the face of the planet, all right? Think about it. He lived here for what, like 33 years or something? Like and is that right? 33 years? And think about that, a guy who lived for 33 years and he only had three years in public ministry <laughs> and we still talk about him today. I mean, in so many different ways, it's so profound. He's the greatest teacher of all time. So knowledge of God, is it important? Yes, but it's not the essence of what Christianity is all about. So here's why. We don't want to be a bunch of people who just know a lot about God. We want to be people that have been moved by God in such a way that it's transformed our lives so that we live fully for him. All right. So I just gave you a bunch of different things. I want to check in with you. What other different things that you think about what I just said? So I just talked about Christianity is not about Jesus offering a wonderful moral example. He's not here to just teach us on how to get out of here, go to heaven. And he's not here just to be teaching about God himself. Any thoughts, questions, comments on that? I'd love to see it. I'm tuning in. So let me know if you have anything. I'm going to keep going on, but you're not interrupting me. I'd love to hear from you to see if any of that stands out to you or strikes you in any way. All right. So if it's not these things, what is Christianity all about? All right. Christianity is about the story of things that happened through which the world was changed. Okay. This is so important to understand the story or the narrative of Scripture like I referred earlier as the five act play, good creation, right? It was good creation. Then you have the effects of the fall, the story of Israel as the covenantal people of God, right? All of that leads to and pointed to Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone and linchpin of this Christian movement. So the birth of Jesus Christ, this was the launching point of God's new kingdom and the fulfillment of the story of the Israelites 
and the four echoes of a voice. So like I've been wrestling with this, like we in my group last um, last week at our, our Lenten group, it came up as a question like saying, do you think that that Jesus knew or that God knew that Jesus was going to have to come right from the beginning? <laughs> like meaning like because God made a covenant with the people of Israel, right, through Abraham, that they were going to be this holy nation. And, and so I'm sitting there going, well, what if they fulfilled on that? Like Israel didn't fulfill on that. And we know that. But was it always part of the story that Jesus was going to have to come? And so I, I don't even know the answers on that. I'm just saying that's a great question to wrestle with. Um, and I'm still wrestling with it, but I've talked to different folks through the week about this. And um, I'm, I'm, it's just a fascinating thing. So my gut says yes, <laughs> um, that it was, it was pivotal in that Jesus was going to be this, right? All these signposts were lean, uh, lending themselves to him. So justice and spirituality, relationships and beauty, the story, the themes within the story of Israel itself were signposts pointing to Jesus Christ. Now in Jesus, now think about this. We said this, like the people of Israel, when you think about the four echoes, we said justice is one of them. So what did the people of Israel want? They kept saying, we need a king. We need a king. We need a king. If we're going to become this great nation that you called us to be, God, we need a king. And so that's when they started getting, you know, Saul and David and Solomon, all the different kings. And yet we know that that did not uh, fulfill the promises. But here, Jesus Christ is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords, right? Like, I love that about Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the now the one true king. And we want his kingdom to come for him to reign on earth now. Right. So that's why he talked about. And we'll talk about this later. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God so much because that's why he came. So he is the king. Right. This is the one that they've been longing for. But he's the one that's going to set everything back to rights. And then you look at spirituality. And so what did the Israelites do? The Israelites, what they did was they had the temple. And the temple was this sacred place, the sacred space where God dwelled, where his presence was, was felt and realized, right? So in that, Jesus Christ is coming. He is the new temple. The presence of God lives in him. He's God incarnate. He's fully human and fully divine. So God's presence is fully revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. And it's in that way that we no longer need the temple as they knew it, right? Which is like, that's, we'll get to that in a second. That's craziness. And then you have the relationships, right? And the Torah. So the Israelites, they wanted the Torah because this was like how to live as God's covenantal people. And so it's so important. And it says that Jesus now, he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. Like he is the fulfillment of this law. And what did he say? He gave us the two great commandments to love God with everything you got and to love your neighbor as yourself. So in Jesus Christ, again, this is completely fulfilled. And then lastly, you have beauty, right? And in the beauty part uh, of, of Israel is what they needed was they, it was the land. The symbol of beauty was land and it was the promised land. It was becoming taken out of Egypt and take out of slavery to freedom and new birth and a new nation into this promised land. And now Jesus, this is, catch this. So Jesus coming on the scene, you go from creation to new creation. And he launched his rescue mission in Christ Jesus, then and there and here and now, right? So this, this is a rescue mission that in Jesus Christ, it's fully launched and it's, it's in motion today. And so the promised land that we're waiting for is new creation. And this is, this is all fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So this is why this is integral to our understanding as Christians about this movement. All right. And then lastly, maybe I'll say this. Jesus Christ in his movement called Christianity, it changed the world. Okay. So I can't emphasize this enough. It's not just a nice religion, a religion to attend to and be part of. No, like I, I, I kind of cringe when people say, oh, you're religious or you're part of a religion. I'm like, ah, I, you know, obviously in essence, yes, there's a truth to that. But I feel like when people say that, 
there's a negative connotation. Like people don't really want to have anything to do with a religion anymore. So I'm like, but do you want to be part of a movement? Do you want to be part of a people that lay down their lives for the other? That they have these values of forgiveness and love and giving people dignity and respect and we show compassion to the poor. We care about the social issues of the day. Like we're here to make a difference and put the world back to rights again. Like is this worth giving your life to? Like this is what Jesus came for. This is what he talked about. And so whenever people talk about a religion, I'm like, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Because if you're just talking about like going to church and like checking that off the box, like somehow that makes me a good Christian. Like, no, that's hogwash. Like that's not, don't sign me up for that. That's not what this is about. This is about changing my life. This is about changing your life so dramatically that there's something different when you wake up in the morning. Like you can't help but go, God, I want to do something for you. I want to demonstrate your love to this world. I want to make a difference in this world. I want to add value to people's lives. Like I'm not, I don't take my calling. Um, like when I wake up, I'm not just going through the motions. If I'm a teacher or I'm a nurse or whatever I am, I show up to play hard in that game. I show up to make a difference in the people that I'm serving, that I'm caring for, that I'm teaching, that I'm leading. Right? That's, that's what Jesus does because it's a movement. It's about a group of people that have said yes to the invitation to have their lives radically shifted and changed so they no longer live in life for themselves, but they're living life to make a difference in this world in honor of God Almighty. Amen? All right. So let me see. Some people, I'm a little excited, and I don't see amens and hand claps and hearts and all this stuff. Like, let's go, people. Come on. I want to hear where you're at. I want to see what's going on inside of you. But that's what this is all about. All right. So we're going to put up. I want to hear you guys, though. Like, give me some interaction. I need to see that this is making sense. I need to see that you're with me. All right. Now I start to see some thumbs up going on. Make some comments. Bella Maria, let's go. All right. I see someone with a mask on. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Let's go. Let's go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Praise God, right? Praise God. And so, uh, let's see. I want to say this before. I'm going to bring up a quote, but hold on one second. Heaven came to earth. <laughs> All right. So, I want you to just think about that. That in Jesus Christ, heaven came to earth and Jesus fulfilled God's promises once and for all. Right? So to be a follower of Jesus Christ is about being part of his great rescue mission and ushering in new creation. Like you and I, we have a role to play. This isn't meant to be passive. I mean, this is action oriented. This is about living on the skinny branches, taking risks for God, living out the great adventure in Christ. All right. And so listen to this quote. All right. So we're going to put it up on the screen. N.T. Wright says this. Christianity is all about the belief that the living God, all right, I love that, the living God in fulfillment, right? Hear this, in fulfillment of his promises and as the climax of the story of Israel has accomplished all this, right? So this is important to get this fulfillment of the promise and the climax of the story of Israel. So this is very intentional from God to send Jesus. And he's accomplished this, the finding, the saving, and the giving of new life in Jesus Christ. With Jesus, God's rescue operation has been put into effect once and for all. In particular, we are all invited to discover through following Jesus that this new world is indeed a place of justice, a place of spirituality and relationships and beauty. And we are not only to enjoy it, yes, we are enjoy it as such, but to work at bringing it to birth on earth as in heaven. Come on. This is so powerful and beautiful. Oh my gosh. Come on. Let's go. Let's see. I'm just checking in. thought I saw some comments here. Ruth says, what a wonderful God we serve. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, I, that's just a simple statement from Ruth. What a wonderful God we serve. And, and it's so profound, right? Like, this is just mind-boggling. Like, that quote that I just read, it's so powerful and beautiful because Jesus came to give new life. Oh, my gosh. Like, think about that. Not the stagnancy of life, not the monotony of life, not the routine of life, not just going through the motions of life. He came to give you new life. 
like with new purpose, a new meaning, right? And and then the thing about this though is that when Jesus came, it was countercultural. Like new life was not the status quo. It wasn't what the Israelites were expecting. When Jesus came on the scene to talk about his kingdom, talking about what it meant to live in this kingdom, it was counterintuitive. It was countercultural. It threw everything upside down and end up why he got killed. But let me read to you very quickly, right? I don't have um, I don't have this on the screen. I am just going to read this to you. This is the Beatitudes, and I just want you to get the flavor of Jesus' teaching. These are like called the Sermon on the Mount. This is like from the most important uh, teachings that Jesus ever did. And it's found in Matthew 5, 1 through 12, and then 14 through 16. It says this. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. I love that. He just kind of sat down. <laughs> I love this whole scene, like there's crowds, he's on a mountainside, he's just sitting there, right? <laughs> His disciples come to him and he began to teach them. And he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Like, I, I'm not going to, I can't go, I don't have enough time to go into all of this, but it's like, blessed are the poor in spirit. It's like, what? <laughs> and then he's saying this to him, he's like, and theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See, your idea of what the kingdom was is so backwards. Let me give you a picture of it. And it's so foreign to what you think. Not only that, it's blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Like that should have said in their minds, those who are brutal, those who are forceful, those who are vengeful, those who are the ones that are going to overtake Rome. But no, Jesus said the meek. And then it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Again, like he's this is so foreign. Like, they don't want to hear this. They want a king who's going to come and overthrow Rome. They want to, it's like they're going to show so much violence that no one will ever mess with them again. And Jesus is saying, wait a second. Blessed are those who are persecuted for their righteousness. And then he says, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And then it goes on to say, You, my friends, you are the light of the world. In a town built on a hill, it cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's what this movement is all about, right? And that's just like a little bit of what we're talking about, all right? And so this is a powerful, powerful picture that Jesus is coming on the scene to paint before them. Oh, let me check in here. So Lori says, there is no greater joy than acting purely out of love and kindness. So you guys can click on the, if I make a comment, you can click on it and bring it right into the screen. Betsy says, Thank you. We need you guys because of all the hate groups in um, Kenan that call themselves Christians to teach what Christianity truly means. Amen. Right? Like, this is just this idea, this, this, this ideal, this movement, this, the values of the kingdom of God. This is for the world. This is for societies. Right? It starts with the family, breaks off into society, goes to the cities, the states, and the nation. And to the whole world. Like that is the essence of why Jesus came to earth. Right? And so let's keep going on here. It says, wait, wait, say, all right. So Delita says, the world says peace through strength. Jesus says peace through love. And I'll say this, peace through laying down your life. Woo! Thank you, Delita. Yes. Right? And strength, like... In meekness, there's so much strength and power in meekness and in humility and serving the other. Woo-wee! 
All right, all right. So Jessica says the Beatitudes have always brought me such hope, right? And that's what we need in our time here now. This kingdom is here now. And so let's talk about God's great rescue operation, because this is what it's truly about. It was put into effect once and for all in Christ, right? Because at the cross, what did Jesus say? He's hanging there. And it looks like he's vulnerable and weak and defeated. And all of a sudden he says, it is finished. And it's like the one, the evil one who thought he had the upper hand. It's like, oh my gosh. When he said it is finished and took his last breath, it was actually the launching point for all of creation to be saved once and for all. It's the most beautiful and powerful exhibit. And it's like, then we're waiting though, aren't we? Because we're waiting for Easter to come. We're waiting for resurrection to come. Because if this is true, this Messiah will not stay dead. And so, my goodness, we are going to be celebrating on Easter Sunday. So here's a little like little uh, timeout TV timeout here, little commercial. So on Easter, we are going to celebrate. It is finished. And he, the, the idea that he is arisen. Right, And we're going to celebrate the life that we have in Jesus Christ. And we're going to come together in person, right? So we're going to be online and in person. We're going to have two services, 9 a.m. and 1030 at Four Echoes. I'm super excited about this. This is, you know what? It's like one thing. It's like, first of all, sp the, the spring, right? Like the, as creation and Jesus kind of like threw themselves into history, right? It's like all of a sudden it's like, wow, here it is. We are going to be like spring is here. It's coming. So it's been a long winter. And here we go. We're going to be launching this off by having both an online service and they'll also to the services in person at Four Echoes. And we're going to do it at 9 a.m. and at 1030 so that, you know, hopefully you can celebrate Easter in a different way, uh, meaning you can be with family, you can be with friends, hopefully, uh, in light of COVID and just uh just have a wonderful day. So we want to kind of start it off earlier so that you guys can enjoy the rest of the afternoon. But we would love for those that feel comfortable enough to come out and be together in person to do so. 9 a.m., 1030. There'll be a link right here. So in, um, I think it's Delita. Delita is going to put a link here so that you can register. Uh, we do need to register for people to come to services just so that, you know, for the contact tracing and the different things like that. Um, it's just a good thing to be able to do. And we still be mindful of the numbers, right? We just got to keep an eye on that. But yeah, so these are family services too. We're going to have the children be with us. It'll be maybe uh, from 9 a.m. to 10.05, right? We're going to be an hour, hour and five minute service. We're going to have a photo booth. Um, Crystal is going to put these beautiful balloons type of them. I don't even know what they're called, but it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I see pictures of what it could look like. Um, but we're going to have a little thing for the, the families and the children to kind of go at the back of the property. Um, we're going to have a big place where they can have a photo booth and take, you can take family pictures. Um, we might do a little thing with Easter eggs and candy, right? Just a little something. But we just want to make this a family-friendly, fun Sunday to celebrate the risen Christ. My gosh. And, and, and so I, I'm so pumped about this because when I think about the person of Jesus Christ and why he came, and he's the fulfillment of these things. Right, this long-awaited Messiah of the Israelite people for hundreds and hundreds of years of exile and return, exile and return, slavery and set free, slavery and set free. It's like, finally, in Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world changed the course of history, and we get to celebrate it because he's the risen Christ. If he had stayed dead, we don't have Christianity. Do you get that? Like, this is what I'm talking about. It's he is the world, the fulcrum of this is on Jesus Christ. Did he raise from the dead or not? Did he fulfill on the promises of God or not? Oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> All right, so continuing on. So please register, um, invite family and friends out. I mean, this is a great opportunity to bring folks out. If, you know, again, if people feel comfortable doing so, obviously give them online invitations. Get We just want to see thousands of people's lives changed by the good news of Jesus Christ, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. Just want to share the hope that we have in Christ to celebrate together and um, just have fun. All right, so let's keep going on because this next part, right? So you got God's great rescue operation, right? And then you have the part of that operation is bringing heaven to earth. We are here to bring heaven to 
earth. So we get to participate in this bringing of his kingdom here and now. So I love this though, because that means that each of us has a role to play. No, no, it doesn't matter how small a role. It doesn't matter how big a role. It's the fact that Jesus loves you. He's chosen you. He's appointed you here and now in this time in history so that you could play your role. And all this, like when I think about this, it's about every single person deserves to have purpose. Every single person on earth deserves to have dignity and respect. Every single person on earth in Christ has an opportunity to be part of building his kingdom. No one is left out. I was getting my hair cut done this week and it was so sweet. Uh, when I was there, there's a, a person who, um, I, I forget like how you say it, um, was a little bit mentally impaired. I'll say it that way. And oh my gosh, she was so beautiful. Like it, it just her innocence, the joy. And she was talking with me and I was interacting with her and I just had so much joy. It was like five minutes, but I had so much fun talking with her and being with her. And I was just saying like every single person here on earth has a role to play. And we bring joy and beauty. We bring, we just have, we can do things. And I'm just saying like simple ways. Like this young girl, she had no idea like the joy she brought me. Just in her being, right? So beautiful. And, and people are desperate for these things. Like people want their lives to matter. You know what I mean? Like people want to live a life of significance. And unfortunately though, what happens in our world is many of us are chasing after the, the, the American dream and all the materialism and all these things that really, at the end of the day, it's like, oh, it falls short. But in Christ, when you are here to make a difference in the world, to help the, put the world back to rights and go out and make disciples who make disciples who make disciples, you know, people are walking around with a void. There is a spiritual void in us. There's a need for us who say yes to Jesus Christ to live out his way so that others can see and go, that's something that I want in my life because there's something missing. And that which is missing perhaps is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And in that, may we find more and more and more of the depths of our relationship with him and, and what it means to live more fully for him. And as we do that and it unfolds, all of a sudden the purpose is realized. And all of a sudden there's a sense of peacefulness that comes into our being. There's no more striving. There's a sense of just being and living, being and living. And it's so amazingly beautiful. All right. So let me check in. Denise says, Easter service registration complete. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Lisa Ponson says, Jesus wants us to love, have a forgiving heart, and simply live a simple life. <laughs> I like that, Lisa. Thank you. And, and, you know, man, there's so much beauty in that sentence that you're saying there. The simple life, right? When you can find simple pleasures, like I was, I was saying this the other day. I was out, I was out to eat the, last night with with a couple of friends I hadn't seen in a while, and we were talking. I don't know how we even got on this, but I found myself saying this sentence. I said, "I don't know. I just go through life and like whatever comes my way, I'm just going to turn everything into lemonade." You know what I mean? Like take lemons and make lemonade. And that's just how I try to show up in the world. Like, I don't really give a rip about all the stuff that's happening. It's like, great, give me another opportunity to bring good in the world. <laughs> give me another opportunity to shine the light of Jesus Christ into this world. Like every complaint, every problem is an opportunity for God's light to shine, for his kingdom to come, for us to bring heaven to earth. So it's like, I get excited about that stuff. Like that doesn't, that doesn't phase me. And I hope it doesn't phase you because as God's church, we are called to be the light of the world. And man, to live the simplicity of life, the simple pleasures of life through relationships, through justice, through beauty, and through um, spirituality, right? These are things that we can all do. So thank you, Lisa. I so appreciate the simple life. And that's why we're in Simply Christian. Sometimes we, we uh, confuse and complicate Christianity. 
And the essence of it is so beautiful. Love God and love your neighbor. Ah, Betsy says, oh, I needed this enthusiasm today. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you for being with us this morning. And then Tracy says, I feel that he has fulfilled his promises. The inner guidance I've been given to finding my why has given me a more determined focus to living out my purpose. Amen. And so if you guys haven't done the find your why yet, please. Um, Amanda, if you're on, and I don't know if we've done this yet, but make a, make a form for find your why so people can text the word, um, you know, make up a word. I don't know why. We'll put the word W-H-Y in there. And, and then that way, if they just text that, they'll get a little form. All right, let's, let's do that. All right, we're obviously not going to be able to do that today, but I want to make sure that we get that. So let me tell you what the find your why, what, what Tracy is re referring to is an exercise that she went through with, with Kara. So Kara's um, the one that opened the service. She's on our team here at Stone Coast. And so find your why is, is an exercise where you go through your life and you look at some of the most impactful, meaningful experiences of your life. And then with a, another person like Kara, myself and others that were training, you go through this and just sit and um, share these experiences. And, and then we go through sets of questions where we kind of look for themes. And, and, and at the end of it, though, the person starts to form a sentence that becomes their why statement. And it's so clarifying and brings focus and intentionality to how we live our lives. At least it has the potential to do that. So, um, you know, if, if you want to get be a part of that, just put find your why in the comment section for today. That's a good way that we can do that. Uh, Jessica says, just finished the find your why this week. So, so powerful. Jessica, if you don't, if you, I don't know if you hear it up, but if you want, put your why in here, give people a flavor for what that is. And if you don't, don't, that's okay too. <laughs> um, so, all right. So let me see. All right. This next quote, I'm going to bring in a quote from NT, right? All right. It says in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, this is, you got to catch that heaven and earth have come together once and for all. The place where God's space and our space intersect and interlock is no longer the temple in Jerusalem. It is Jesus himself. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> that's a quote from N.T. Wright, but this is what, this is what, when Jesus showed up by his teachings, this is what he's proclaiming. And this was like, you're a heretic. <laughs> like, arrest him. Blasphemy. Crucify that guy. Like, this is why they were so angry. Like, if you don't get this part of the story, like, you don't understand why he was crucified. And if you don't understand, like, he's a suffering servant and that he took upon the pain and the horror and the, the suffering of the world onto the cross himself. Oh, my gosh. This is why it's so powerful, because he is saying this long history of hundreds of years of Israel where the temple was sacred and it was the space where God dwelled. And now he's saying it's Jesus himself. It's like, th think about the audacity of that, of that when Jesus shows up and says, wait a second, I am God incarnate. Right? Oh my goodness. This is such an explosive statement. So, so you got to get the, to the Jews of his day. This was as radical as you could get. <laughs> Jesus Christ is now the temple, the very presence of God. So Jesus fully immersed that which heaven stands for, where God dwells. Heaven is now and earth are fully together. In Jesus, Yahweh, God, Jesus, Spirit, all together on earth. Pause and just understand how ridiculous that is in a good way. But the people that were hearing this, oh my gosh, this rocked their world. This is mind-blowing. But I love this idea that Jesus Christ is where heaven and earth overlapping and interlocking. He was fully man. He was fully God. Heaven and earth coming together. Oh my goodness. So, so, so powerful. You guys have any thoughts or comments or questions on this? Like, because I think if, I think it's important to see how radical they can hear you guys. They can hear you guys. 
<laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> My men here have a conversation as if no one can hear them. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, any thoughts or questions? You guys have thoughts and questions? Bring them. <laughs> hey, we got a little fun here in the studio. <laughs> we have to name this thing. What are we? <laughs> Gotta come up with a name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm waiting for you guys to throw some questions, comments, thoughts in the feed, and then we'll go from there. All right, so now, the most pivotal part of the teaching, I mean, I think all these things are really, really important, um, that Sarah Jane says, and also because of the Spirit, God also lives within us too. Sarah, I love Sarah Jane, that's awesome. Sarah Jane throws out there, put that on the screen, Kenny. And also because of the Spirit, God also lives within us too. I love that thought. Like, so I've, you know, so we, we talked about pantheism um, a couple weeks ago. This idea that God is everywhere and everywhere is God. We wrestle with this. Like, I do. We are fully man or fully woman, right? Whatever, right? So fully per, a, a person, human. But, but we have the divine too. We have the power of the Holy Spirit now in us and now you are the temple. Oh, right? Like you are the temple of God too because his spirit dwells inside of you. Oh my gosh, it's so powerful and so beautiful. May we tap into this more, right? Oh, I love that. Thank you, Sarah. I love, 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 love that. All right. Let's see. Bella Marie says, you can bring these comments up. I found my why. It's helping others who are going through the same things as me. And it feels like I accomplished something good. Right? The good news, Bella, I love that. Right? The good news is about serving and loving and helping others. And that's how we bring forth the good news of Jesus Christ. And then Julie says, my why, I exist to connect and empower others so they may be their authentic self and experience true joy. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yes, Julie. I'm going to say it again. I exist to connect and, and empower others, to connect and empower others so they may be their authentic self, beautiful, and experience true joy. Now, what I want you to get by this, right? And I'm not even talking to Julie right now, but, but it's Julie represents the body of Christ, if you will. Oh my gosh, think about this. When we show up living out our own personal why, our own unique expression of God's love in us and through us, can you imagine the world when Julie shows up and the people that she touches, they experience their authentic selves and they experience true joy? Like, tell me, if she reaches out to a thousand people, 10,000 people, and she shows up in her why, come on, kingdom come, baby. And then Lauren says, it sounds so simple, yet there is so much noise and distraction in the world. Working to stay focused on living for an audience of one. I love that, Lauren, right? Because, yes, usually it's simple yet, uh, but not easy, <laughs> right? Simple but not easy. And this is the work. Like, this is why we are, um, I want to say this. Tracy had shared at the group the other night about being in exile. So we talked about the story of Israel as the exile in return. Exile in return. And say, like, so the, the story of the Israelites themselves was this story of like getting it right and messing up, being faithful, being unfaithful, right? And, and being in a love relationship with God and then having an affair against God, uh, being in an adulterous people as it talks about. And here we are. It says in, uh, Paul says it this way in the New Testament, it says, I know, the, I know the things I ought to do and yet I don't do. And the things I know I shouldn't do, that I find myself doing. And it's like this spiritual battle that's going on. This is why. We live in the in-between times that is so important for the body of Christ to rise up, to encourage one another, support one another, fight for one another, so that we can grow together and be that strong body of Christ so none of us are alone and that we go through the battle together. But we also have Jesus interceding on our behalf and we have the Holy Spirit within us to empower us. We have the Word of God to inform us. So, Yes, the battle is real, and yet we are overcomers, and we are victorious. Always hang on to that. You are an overcomer, and you are victorious. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he didn't look victorious, but the victory was his already. 
So, so, oh, yes, right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! Oh, man, no, you guys are doing amazing. I love this. Kara says, what a gift to be designed by God for this purpose. Keep it up. Lori says, does, does formed in his image suggest that we bring this up? Uh, Lori Hayden, if you can bring that up. Does formed in his image, in quotes, suggest that we are his offspring, that God is within us? Okay, I love this. So first of all, yes, right? The, the simple answer is yes. Formed in his offspring. So one of the beautiful things about Jesus Christ, when he came, think about this. It was Israel, and Israel was the chosen people of God, the nation, the blessed nation that was supposed to be a blessing to the rest of the world. When Jesus came, he took that which was Israel, and he took what was called the Gentiles of the days, or the pagans, if you will, all the non-Jews, if you will. So you have Jews and Gentiles, if you just look at two people groups. And this is why Jesus got killed, is because he himself, as a Jewish man, was putting forth that this movement was for all people. Like, oh, we're going to get to this in a second, right? But this is absolutely critical to get that Jesus this is why the movement was for all the world. This is why it changed the course of history. And yes, we are made in his image. And that means we are his offspring. You are a son or a daughter of God. So yes, that is God is within us. So when we do this, text Y. Okay, so uh, put that in the um, feed. Amanda, all right? Just put it in the feed. So Amanda's texting me. So you guys can put in your find your Y right now. Um, so go ahead and put that in the feed so that you can announce that, okay? And uh, so that is God within us. Yes, I believe that to be true, Lori, that we are made in his image. We are to be conformed into his image. That's the work of discipleship. So we're in progress, right? Where it says that um, all of us fall short, right? But that we're also all works in progress. And so we because we have the desire of our heart is to seek first his kingdom, he'll add the desires of our heart unto us. And so part of that is to become more like him. And that's why as we work with injustice, spirituality, beauty, and relationships, then that's where we um, are, are demonstrating that as being part of his mission. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm going to, you guys are doing great. Uh, I see Amanda threw in text you why. Um, so keep it coming. I love this stuff. Okay. Um, let me, let me move forward here. The kingdom of God is at hand. Okay. So I think we have this verse. So it's Mark 1 15. Let me know if we actually have it. Mark 1 15. Is it in there? It says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. It might not be in there. <laughs> okay. Mark 1 15 says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, right? Oh my gosh, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. That means we are not waiting for some future kingdom thing called heaven. It's at hand. Repent, meaning turn back to God and believe in the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected, all right? So this is the heart of Jesus' message and to the Israelites, though, on one hand, it would have resounded and exhilarated them to think that finally they would have a Messiah King to set them free once and for all. So this is why thousands of people followed Jesus Christ, wanted him and accepted him as Messiah. Right. This is why there was a, a, such a contrast between those that wanted to rest and killed and those that flocked to him and wanted to be healed and wanted to live on purpose with him. Because now you have that on one hand, and at the same time, it must have been extremely frustrating and confusing because the prophet Isaiah spoke of God's coming kingdom as this, right? This is what they would have known. This is what Isaiah spoke about. God's promises and purposes would be fulfilled. So that which they knew to be true, that's what they were taught, would now be fulfilled. Israel would be rescued from pagan oppression and evil, particularly the evil of the oppressive empires, right? Because think about it. They've been taken captive by Babylon, Assyria, Persia, etc., now Rome. Now, God would, have, uh, would usher in a new reign of justice 
and peace. So they're expecting this. They're waiting for this. They're long-awaited Messiah through history. And then they'd also, to speak of God's kingdom arriving in the present, was to sum up the entire narrative and to declare it was reaching its climax. So it's like, think about that. You're getting to the, the top of the mountain. It's been such a long journey, long journey, long journey, but you finally are seeing the top of the mountain and you're on your way. The Messiah is waiting. Finally, God's future was breaking into the present and heaven is arriving on earth. The Jews couldn't have been more uh, excited and thrilled. But this is what happens. See, Isaiah believed Israel's God was doing a new thing. Renewing and reconstituting Israel in a radical way. So this is critical to understand. Because that tension between those who loved Jesus and those that hated him and wanted him killed. This is the battle between good and evil. But it, it, it blows my mind because these are the people of God who could not see God himself through Jesus Christ. So it shows me like how we can be so easily deceived. This is why I'm so cautious to say that I am right or that you are right. Because the Jews of that day that killed Jesus Christ thought that they were right. They, were, they had history and tradition in hundreds of years and the prophets to show them that they were right. Oh boy. So N.T. Wright wrote this quote. We're going to put it on the screen. It says, If this was a rescue operation, it was one with a difference. It wasn't a matter of the God of Israel simply fighting off the wicked pagans and vindicating his own people, which is what they would have expected. It was more devastating. It was about God judging. Here we go. Not only the pagans, but also Israel itself. That's blasphemy. That's crazy talk right there. But it's about God acting in a new way in which nothing could be taken for granted. About God fulfilling his promises, but doing so in a way that nobody had expected or anticipated. Here it is. God was issuing a fresh challenge to Israel, echoing back to his promises to Abraham. Israel is indeed the light of the world, but its present policies have been putting that light under a bucket. It's time for drastic action. Instead of the usual military revolt, which is what they expected, it was time to show the pagans what a true God was really like. Not by fighting and violence, but by loving one's enemies, turning the other cheek, and going the second mile. This is so backwards, counterintuitive, life-changing and world-changing that this had their attention, right? And so this is why we're here now. It's like Lauren said, we still feel this tension even today in our midst. So today's church and the kingdom is real. The kingdom of God is here now in this day and age. And we are here to put the world back to rights. You and I have a purpose we're here to, to uphold justice, to restore relationships, to instill beauty, and to be invigorated spiritually. We're here to bring heaven to earth. So like every day when you wake up, I talked about the five-act play. So the fourth act is Jesus Christ, but the fifth act is you and me. It's the church. And we are now here to usher in new creation. So when you wake up in the morning, are you fired up to make this world a better place? to add value to people's lives, to put a smile on someone's face, to do acts of kindness, to see a need, meet a need, to give hope away, to be dignity and respect, and offer that away to all people. This is why we're here. And it's the whole point of Jesus Christ was to bring heaven to earth and join them together forever. This is why he came. And he came, and it's so funny to me because Isaiah actually foretold this, because he gave them a picture of what they would expect, but then he also gave them a picture of Jesus was going to come as a suffering servant, and they had no idea what that meant. Okay, so I'm going to close with this last quote. And this is about the cross. N.T. Wright says this, The death of Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews 
the bearer of Israel's destiny, the fulfillment of God's promises to his people of old, is either the most stupid, senseless waste and misunderstanding the world has ever seen, or it is the fulcrum around which the world history turns. Christianity is based on the belief that it was and is the latter. Look at your phone. Jesus exhausted evil on the cross. Jesus took all our sins upon himself. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. The suffering servant, Jesus Christ, fulfilled his mission and purpose of bringing heaven to earth once and for all. What we're going to do is we're going to close with a song called Lamb of God. But before we do that, before we do that, the Lamb of God, I want you just to allow God's, like through, through the music, be with God. Be with the cross. Be with Jesus. Be with this movement and the story. That all these things that we just talked about, that Jesus, this is the climax of the story of Israel fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He's our Messiah. He's the one that went to the cross on our behalf. He is the Lamb of God. And Amanda just sings this beautiful song. Um, so let's do that, and then Carol will close us out. So God bless you. I love you. Go ahead and run that song. What a service.
Sean, thank you so much. What a uh, powerful and hopeful message that was today. Uh, one thing that stands out to me in today's message is the idea that Jesus was more concerned about how we live our life here on earth um, to help bring heaven to earth rather than uh, just, just doing our time and, and getting to heaven. I see that as such a privilege and an honor to be part of God's plan of redemption and restoration. It means that our lives matter here. It means that uh, we have a role to play. We have a purpose for our lives and we get to live that out. What a remarkable way to live, isn't it? So this week, I invite you to think about this idea and start um, to figure out what this means in your life. Again, we'd love to connect with you if you're interested in doing the Find Your Why exercise. A um, Couple of things before we leave. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. If you are new and missed the link at the beginning of service, we'd love to connect with you. You can click on that link so we can get to know who you are. We invite you to participate in giving and being part of all that Stone Coast is doing in our community. Um, soul care links will also be added to the feed. We'd love for you to be part of that. We, we are just about halfway to our goal of 100 shoes. So we'd love to really report next week that those numbers have, uh, we've exceeded that number before the end of this campaign. That would be super exciting. So we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, Sunday night and Wednesday night in our community groups. You could also sign up for those. And uh, thank you for joining us this week. We're glad you're here and part of Stonecoast. Have a great week.